Okay, today I'm sitting in my kitchen with Abby Fenimore of Studio 1025 from Dallas, Texas. And boy, did she give us a cocktail recipe that you're gonna wanna try. These margaritas are delicious. And I'm telling you right now, after I get done with all these recordings, I'm gonna need rehab. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Cheers to you. Abby and I have known each other for a long time. We've been uh, friends and, and working together in design probably for maybe 20 years. I'm not really sure. But I want you to tell everyone a little bit uh, about your history, your family, your personal life. Let's, uh, let's start with that. Okay, well, I'm originally from Little Rock, Arkansas. All right. And my father was in the Air Force until he retired. He was about 38 years in the military. So I grew up kind of in a military-based family, which I loved. And my mother has an accounting background, which is amazing because I'm horrible at math. So um, I had uh, divorced parents when I was young. So I spent a lot of time with my grandparents up in Fort Smith. So I'm a big Arkansas girl. Mm. Although I ended up at Louisiana Tech instead of Arkansas because they did not have an interior design program at the time, okay. which was a little frustrated because I really wanted to be a Razorback. Okay. Woo pig. So I am still a big Razorback fan, big time. Um, <clears throat> anyway, I ended up uh, going to Louisiana Tech, loved it, moved to Austin. Um, it was really hard to be away from my family. That was kind of my first time to leave kind of my little Arklatex region. Um, but I'm an only child and I'm very close to my parents, um, mother and father. My father passed away a few years ago. So that's been very difficult. He was kind of my anchor, whereas my mom is like, the good best friend. So I miss him quite a bit. And of course, my grandparents that I was very close to are all gone, but um, I have a great family. I'm so fortunate to have grown up where I did. And um, I am a huge USA Go America kind of girl. I love my country. I love our military. And I'm so thankful that I grew up around that in that environment. Yeah. And um, I had very hardworking parents. You know, they, my dad had nothing but military jobs. I mean, he had a few civilian jobs outside of that. Um, my mother too, they all just worked very hard to make sure that I could have what I needed, which you don't realize until you're an adult. So I'm very thankful for that, that I had the opportunity to um, have them send me to be educated and they took care of me and I never went without. So um, yeah, so then I just kind of ended up in Texas after school and Met a boy. Austin, now Dallas. So. Met a boy. Met a boy. So I lived in Austin for a few years and that was what they call the dot bomb. So I think that was like 20, or was it? You call it 20, like 2000, yeah. what do you call it? Just 2000. Yeah, yeah. Um, everything kind of crashed, you know, all the online things that were going on. And I ended up moving to Dallas for a job and um, always been in the design industry. So that didn't change. And yeah, I met my husband. Let me see. I moved here in December and I met him the following May through a best friend I grew up with in Arkansas who moved to Dallas. Yeah. Shout out in a bar. <laughs> him, but I certainly have heard a lot about him. So, Hey, tell me, who influenced your design style? Because, you know, what you do is incredible. I know all of your family is you. proud of you and the success that you've seen. I don't know. I think I've always had a very outgoing, I wouldn't say aggressive personality. Although my dad used to say, and I will still quote to people, I offend more than I get offended. Um, he's always just, shut up, Abby, quit talking, zip it. I've always been a talker. I mean, I got in trouble in school because I talk too much and then they'd spell my name wrong on the board. So I had to let, you know, let her know she spelled my name wrong. So I've always just been a very outgoing person. I love people. Right. Um, I've always been creative and my parents were wonderful. They would let me take art classes and I was more kind of into the creatives than the sports and I'm just not athletic. So that's not good. But I am, um, I think too, my, during the summer, I would go hang out with my grandmother who worked at a, it's like a real estate office and she was the office manager. And downstairs, there was a design firm that rented the space. And it wasn't, you know, pretty or anything. They did like nursing homes and hospitals, but they let me go down there and organize fabrics. And I just really was like, oh, this is so great. I love this. And when I got into junior high and high school, my mom was like, okay, I'm going to let you decorate your room. And it was like floral balloon shades and the water bed and the, you know, white and gold bed. I mean, it was so gaudy now that I look back, but it was Southern, right? And I, I loved it. And I loved my balloon shades and I would put them up every morning and, and organize them so that they laid in perfect little 
yeah. matching ways. So I love that. And, and I think that had a lot to do with it. My parents just kind of let me go and being an only child, you know, you have that ability to be creative and you're not splitting attention with other people. I was always fine being by myself. Um, I had a lot of friends, but, um, again, like being by myself was always fine. So I think in high school is when I really started to say, okay, what am I going to do? Cause you know, they kind of start getting on your back. Hey, what do you want to do? Where do you want to go to school? I'm like, well, I want to be a designer. And I just thought it was so cool. And of course, who didn't love designing women? Give me a break. <laughs> what a great show. Oh my gosh. And then dynasty in Dallas, I would watch those with my mother. And I just remember being amazed by their homes and the grand staircases and the outfits and just A to Z, everything they did. So I think that was part of it is just, I always had it in me, but my family just nurtured it and allowed me to, you know, kind of do my own thing. So when I decided I'm going to be an interior designer, um, they really helped me kind of find a school that would, you know, nurture that. And that when I got out of school, I would have an opportunity for a great career and then I could figure out what I wanted to do. So that's kind of how that happened. What would you call your design style if you could name it? I mean, definitely bold, fearless, colorful. Um, I always tell people this, and especially when I work with clients, I communicate visually. So I need you to show me what you want, what you like. Um, it doesn't mean you copy it. It just means that's how I, like you can say pink. Okay, well pink, that could be blush. It could be fuchsia. I mean, raspberry. I mean, there's so many different kinds of pinks that you know you can do. So it's it's honing in on that visual with somebody. And so... I don't know. I, I think one thing that I love about the clients that I have, and I've really never had to compromise my style and what I wanted to do in design. And they've always just kind of trusted me and come along with that. And they're open to seeing things they wouldn't otherwise think would work. Yeah. And I think that's kind of how I work. I mean, I keep things basic when you start and then the layering and the mixing and matching is just my favorite part. I get super excited for every project, I get up sometimes at two in the morning. I'm like, oh, what am I going to do? I got to do this. And it's not about stress. It's about I'm excited because I thought of an idea. Wow. To me, you have a Southern uh, flair with a modern twist. I love looking at your designs. They're all always so colorful. And your use of that color is always amazing. It seems to relate and not like, you know, in your face. So I think that you do a magnificent job. Um, I was, sent you uh, our new intros and I sent you a little sales training on the new intros. If anyone's interested, uh, they can request that so we can send that out in a PDF. Um, what would you see that you liked? Is there a favorite piece? Well, there are quite a few. And as you know, I've already been trying to specify some of them. I think my favorite piece though are the consoles. Mm. Um, when I think about pieces that I miss or constantly like stress over that I can't find for a client. I love classic lines and classic pieces, but I love the unique flair of almost like a Hollywood glam, but a little vintage because newer pieces are almost so predictable, right? So if you have a really good classic piece, maybe it has a unique leg or hardware or an edge detail or something. And I love that about your line. There's always something so unique added to the basic design because think about it. There's only so many ways you can create a piece that also has function. So I really love the consoles or sideboards or media cabinets because those are something that I feel like are great statement pieces in a home room, wherever you're using. Uh, Dalton, is that one of the new ones? It is. He's my favorite and I love the Vincent kind of dresser slash cabinet. I'm actually gonna use that as a media cabinet in a living room because it's cool. It just looks different and you wouldn't expect it. And honestly, what happens? People just shove stuff in there anyway, and a drawer works just as well as a floating shelf. So um, I think that's gonna be cool. And then the other thing I really loved about the new introductions were some of the lighting pieces. You guys always have really cool mid-century glam kind of mix of lighting. And um, I know it's new, is it Layla? Uh, gosh, Lily. my memory, I, you know. With so many uh, items, it's hard to remember. It's the acrylic chandelier that has that really beautiful rounded yeah. scoop yeah. bottom. Beautiful. It's beautiful. And I'm so excited. I think I'm going to put that in an entry. It's just a really classic piece, but unique. So I, I love acrylic. Um, it's a big joke here with the girls I work with, with my family, with everybody. It's like acrylic, acrylic. I love acrylic. It's such a great visual piece because it doesn't take up visual space, but it just looks amazing. So 
those would be my favorites um, from the new line so far. So what created our cocktails and creatives uh, was of course this COVID-19 virus. And um, I believe it has been a horrific pandemic, but it's also been a way that people have kind of recharged and reinvented themselves and uh, finding new ways to do business. And so um, this was kind of one of our ways to be able to reach out and connect with not only great friends, but good designers and share with the rest of the world. So how are you gonna be doing business differently, I think, through this COVID-19 pandemic? I think what it has forced me to do is just slow down a little bit because you get so caught up in um, the little details and everything in life that you miss the good parts a lot of times, I feel like. I mean, I know I do. So I feel like what's really changed, I mean, I feel like I've always had great relationships with my clients, but like what you and I are doing right now, being able to talk on a video chat and, you know, explore ideas or do home tours. So I'm doing a few more of those things. Um, I've had more time for social media, which I don't know if that's good or bad. It can be a little bit um, draining, but um, it's a great way to communicate with your clients and just the industry because we do get disconnected from each other. I mean, yes, our job is to work with our clients, but you know, you and I have a great relationship and I couldn't do what I do without you and your crew and everyone that comes together that makes me look good. So I feel the exact same way about my reps and everyone that I work with. I mean, relationships are so important to me and they're just such a foundation of what I do every day. And that makes me a better designer. So, you know, I love that I've had the time to kind of reconnect with people. So I feel like that's something going forward I really want to keep doing is, um, really continue to nurture those relationships and um, bring my clients along and let them kind of see, you know, what goes on, not so much behind the scenes because they don't always want to see everything, but they kind of like a little peek behind the curtain. And this has allowed me to do that. And it's, it's been great. It's been okay. And transparency is so important in our industry. So I think that it's, it's kind of strengthened those relationships that I have. And so I think I'm going to continue to implement things like that, where I kind of give them a little bit more than just, here's the pretty end result. Um, and you have to be a good read of your client. You have to know if that's something they are going to be okay with anyway. Um, but yeah, it's, it hasn't been that stressful for me. I, maybe that makes me, um, a lollygagger or, you know, whatever my grandma used to say, but I've just tried to, you know, be the best I can during this. And it's really allowed me to connect with my home and my studio, my office and my own space. So I mean, I'm really thankful for that, and, and I hope that it reflects in the work that I do going forward. I can't imagine anyone ever calling you a lollygagger. <laughs> uh, it is great for people like us that are creative to recharge and reconnect and see life in a different eye. Um, so I think that you, you said that perfectly for sure. And I think everyone's going to probably be reinventing or I would say polishing the way that they do business now. And so um, hopefully something good will come out of something bad. Um, I will say I adore you. I loved working uh, on my project with you, uh, the sorority house. I hope that we get to do some more custom products and uh, more sorority houses. My daughter's just in a sorority and, you know, it's so much fun and it's an important time in these girls' lives. Uh, but thank you for being such a good friend and a good customer. And I look forward to working with you for so many more years to come. Me too. Well, thank you. And I can't thank you enough for all the hard work. I mean, the custom pieces, I mean, I've completely trusted you guys because I know you know what you're doing, but what a great opportunity as a designer to be able to connect with vendors like you. And we need more of you guys. I mean, there are a lot of you out there, but that personal connection and that understanding of how, you know, small business versus a large business work. Um, I don't know, everyone thinks, you know, cause you're one or two people that you're so tiny, but it's people like you that make us so mighty and so powerful in a positive way. So I'm so thankful to that. So I can't wait to, to see all this install in a few months. That's great. Well, uh, be sure everyone, all of our viewers, uh, check out Abby at Studio 1025. Follow her on Instagram, Facebook, all the social platforms. And I so look forward to seeing you soon. Yes, thank you. Cheers, everybody. Cheers. Almost you. Friday. Absolutely. Bye. Bye.